On day one, we will begin working on an impenetrable, physical, tall, powerful, beautiful southern border wall. Our message to the world will be this. You cannot obtain legal status or become a citizen of the United States by illegally entering our country. Can't do it. Welcome to the Journal Editorial Report. I'm Paul Gigo. That was Donald Trump in Phoenix, Arizona Wednesday, doubling down on his hardline position on illegal immigration, despite some recent suggestions that he might be softening. That was his word on his signature campaign issue. The speech followed a meeting with Mexican President Enrique Peña Nieto earlier in the day, where the Republican presidential candidate struck a more subdued tone, promising that a Trump administration would work with Mexico to secure the southern border. Joining the panel this week, Wall Street Journal columnist Kim Strassel, assistant editorial page editor James Freeman, columnist Mary Anastasia O'Grady, and editorial board member Joe Rago. So Kim, let's start it off by talking about the Mexican trip, which a lot of people in advance said was high risk for, for Donald Trump. Uh, how do you think that turned out for him? I think that that was a good moment for Donald Trump because, look, the point of this was to uh, take this opportunity to go down and show that he had the ability to to talk to a foreign leader. He had the temperament uh, to, to go and do a negotiation. Uh, this is something that Hillary Clinton has hit him on hard, suggesting he's not qualified. So to go down there, not have any too big of an explosive moment, be able to do the photo op and shake hands, that was arguably a good moment for Donald Trump. Now, Mary, you cover Mexico. You know all those folks down there. It didn't uh, play as well in Mexico, although I tend to think for an American audience, I tend to agree with Kim. What do you think? Uh, I don't think it was a good moment at all. And in Mexico, uh, President Peña Nieto is being called a traitor to his country for having met with Donald Trump. And I think um, even though the moment he may have seemed diplomatic, the fact that he came back and basically sandbagged the Mexican president, I think is sending a signal to the world that this guy, if he becomes president, is not someone we can trust. Now, the Mexican president did invite both Hillary Clinton and, uh, uh, and Donald Trump, and Donald Trump's the only one who took him up on it. I don't understand why Hillary Clinton didn't, uh, didn't do it. It would seem to me she would want to do it, too. Well, I agree. I think it's a better opportunity for Hillary Clinton. I think what was going on there is the Mexican president thought if Trump is softening and he comes down here and we make some progress on a more reasonable, you know, relationship between the two countries that um, he would get credit for it. And I think it backfired on him and it it may have worked well with Trump for his base, but I think for the Hispanics in this country, they didn't like it at all. Well, I don't know. I, it, it seemed to me that one of the uh, arguments, James, against Donald Trump that Hillary Clinton's making is that basically he can't be, you, he, he can't behave in polite company. Right. So that if, you know, he looked on stage to me with Pinonato, at least, you know, sober, uh, gracious, respectful uh, uh <laughs> yes in the moment okay. but the the, the follow-up i think was devastating all right let's talk about well, the follow-up i was going to say in the moment <laughs> just to disagree a bit i thought he looked presidential i thought it was also a great moment for peña and yeto even if there is some temporary domestic political blowback because he was the statesman he understands this is their their neighbor and he whether it's trump it's clinton he's saying i understand we have a relationship i want to work on it so i think he did the right thing uh, uh, the blowback now i wish uh, Donald Trump had just gotten on the plane with the bucket of Kentucky Fried and the Wall Street <laughs> Journal and flown back to New York and called it a day. Uh, I, obviously, that, uh, that didn't happen that way. I think uh, he seems to feel that he was sandbagged because Mr. Peña and Yeto, after the meeting, said, I'm not paying for the wall. Right. I, Which now, isn't a surprise. <laughs> not a surprise. Uh, it's Mr. Trump is making an unreasonable request of our neighbor to pay for a wall to keep some of our neighbors down south out. It's a totally unreasonable <laughs> request. So so I think uh, he did not react well. The, the moment uh, was a triumph for Mr. Trump and I think from there it went downhill. Let's that day. talk about the speech Joe and the, and the immigration policy. We had uh, 10 days of uh, back and forth. We didn't know would he be softening. That was his word. His approach to immigration would he not be. In the end I read it as uh, no softening. 
Yeah, I think Trump has gone from point A to point A on immigration. Uh, he's, he essentially embraced mass immigration. Uh, mass deportation. Mass deportation, excuse me. He had a 10-point plan on, on all the security measures uh, that he was going to take, not only at the border, but internal enforcement measures against uh, businesses. E-Verify, which is a dysfunctional program uh, to kind of cross-check uh, who, who has the right papers. Uh, and and n no incentive for people who are already here illegally to come out and have some kind of legal status going forward. So Jim, this, uh, so, so on Joe's point, I, I want to talk about the politics of this immigration speech because it, 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 it's interesting to me, after you, you have that, that event in Mexico, come back and then get, and you, you indicate you may be softening, and then you don't. What's the politics? What's the political calculation? Look, I think what he was trying to do with the Mexico trip, he's trying to walk a very careful line here, Paul. He went down to Mexico in part to show himself to be presidential, right. but also to say, look, I, I can work with this, I, I can negotiate. Uh, uh, he's trying to sort of appeal in that way to Hispanic audience in the United States. But what about the immigration? Uh, the, no, why no change on immigration? It's. I think that this is a, a result of the blowback he got from many of his base supporters over the last week, which really hammered on him, suggesting that he was going wobbly on his signature issue. That seems to have resonated in the end, and that, that seems to have informed that speech in the end, which I don't see in any way how you can say was a softening, um, uh, but was in fact kind of a, even a more aggressive version of a lot of what he's saying. It's a very law and order Donald Trump speech. Paul, Trump has something called Trump's National Advi Hispanic Advisory advisory council. One member resigned from it. One member came out and called the whole thing a scam. After the speech? Yes, and Alfonso Aguilar, who's the president of the Latino Partnership for Conservative Principles, a really solid free market conservative Hispanic, said that he's inclined to pull his support from James, Trump. James, quickly, do you think it was a, a success politically? No, I, and he's running out of time to, to redefine here, but I think he's got, I thought what he was doing was moving toward the sweet spot of we're going to fight criminality and terrorism, but we're not going to limit legal immigration, and uh, he missed an opportunity. Well, certainly the, the criminality came through loud and clear, that was a big that's part for of sure. It. Okay, still ahead, as the presidential campaign kicks into high gear, polls show the race between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump tightening both nationally and in some key battleground states. What it means for the post-Labor Day sprint to the White House when we come back.